Hi, and welcome to Decision Algorithms, the Addition and Multiplication Principles. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas, El Paso, and an assistant professor at Doniana Community College. So, decision algorithms. Let's start with the addition principle. When choosing among R disjoint alternatives, if alternative 1 has n sub 1 outcomes, alternative 2 has n sub 2 outcomes, and so on, uh, then you'll have a total of n1 plus n2 plus, and so on, n sub r possible outcomes. Addition principle. You know you're using addition when you have alternatives. All right, alternatives in making just one decision. Alternatives, addition. Let's look at an example. A restaurant offers three main course salads, four pasta dishes, three beef meals, two chicken dinners, and one pork meal. If I just go in for lunch, I have a choice of a 3 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, or 13 main courses to choose from. 1 out of 13, I'm going to pick my dinner, and that's it. I'm not getting appetizers, I'm not getting dessert, I'm not getting anything else. I just need to pick one thing that I'm going to eat for that day. Um, keep in mind, that's why it takes so long to choose for us women. Alright, give us a break. We're trying to decide first... Do I want salad, pasta, beef, chicken, or pork? And once I narrow it down, then I got to decide which one I want. So be patient, all right? 13 different courses to choose from. But when you're making a sequence of choices with R steps, if step 1 has n sub 1 possible outcomes, step 2 has n sub 2 possible outcomes, step R has n sub R possible outcomes, then you'll multiply to get your total possible outcomes. This is the multiplication principle, obviously, because you're multiplying. You know you're using the multiplication when you have a sequence of steps in making your decision. All right, for example, one of my favorite shows on all of TV. I've never actually seen the menu. One day I'm going to eat there, but Hell's Kitchen. Suppose they offer three appetizers, five main courses, and two desserts. All right, now, you're, you're having a three-course meal. You're not just picking one thing off the menu. You're having a three-course meal. So you can create, first you pick an appetizer, so three options. And then you pick a main course, five options. And then you pick a dessert, two options. All right? It's not or, it's and then. So three times five times two is 30 different three-course meals with that menu. For those of you going into the restaurant business, that's not a lot of product overhead, but you can make a whole bunch of different menus. This is something to keep in mind. Um, Mexican restaurants really kind of nail this. You have two types of tortillas. You have beef, chicken, maybe some shredded beef. You keep it simple. You have rice, you have beans, you have cheese, and it's just all in the way you combine those ingredients. You can make so many different meals that are all delicious in their own right. Now, here's an example. A surgical procedure requires four steps. The first step can result in four possible outcomes. The second can result in three possible outcomes. And the remaining two can each result in two possible outcomes. What's the total number of outcomes possible? Well, it requires four steps. So first step, and then second step, and then, because it's an and then, steps, sequence of choices, we're going to multiply. Uh, the first one results in four possible outcomes. The second can result in three possible outcomes. And the remaining two, each in two. So two times two. Four times three is 12. Times two is 24. Times two, 48 different ways that this surgical procedure could come out depending on uh, which outcome from each of the steps we have. Now this surgical procedure requires choosing among four alternative methodologies. The first can result in four possible outcomes, the second can result in three possible outcomes, and the remaining two methodologies can each result in two possible outcomes. What's the total number of possible outcomes? Well these are alternatives. We're going to look at different methodologies. We're not taking a series of steps. We're looking at options. Options, alternatives, add. So we'll add 4 plus 3 to get 7. And 2 makes 9 plus 2 more to get 11. All right, so a sequence of steps. We're going to multiply. Alternatives, options, we're going to add. So a decision algorithm is a procedure in which we make a sequence of decisions. We can use decision algorithms to determine the number of possible outcomes by pretending we're designing such an item and listing the decisions or choices we should make at each stage of the process. 
Uh, decision trees are a great method here as well. Uh, I We'll see if I use any. Maybe I'll throw one down. I might throw in a second video just to look at decision trees and things that can happen with that. So in our first example, um, alternative one, step one has one outcome. Step two has two outcomes. And alternative two is a sequence. All right? Step one has two outcomes. Step two has two outcomes. And step three has one outcome. Because we have alternatives, I'm going to add these two. All right, so alternative one is a sequence of steps. So I'm going to multiply within here. Step one has one outcome. Step two has two outcomes. So for alternative one, I have one times two possible outcomes. My second alternative, my second option, so I'm going to add, is a sequence of steps. Step one has two outcomes. Step two has two outcomes. Step three has one outcome. So for alternative two, I'm going to have two times two times one. So four different outcomes possible. Alternative one has two outcomes. Alternative two has four outcomes. Because these are alternatives, I will add the results to get six total outcomes, even though individually they were a sequence to get uh, those values. Whew, I use the word outcome too much. It gets confusing in my head as to what I said or not. Professor Easy's final exam has 10 true-false questions followed by two multiple choice questions. In each of the multiple choice questions, you must select the correct answer from a list of five. How many answer sheets are, possi are, are possible? All right, so Professor Easy's final exam has 10 true-false questions followed by. So it indicates a sequence, right? It followed by, uh, then comes next, right, and then. So there are two answers for each true and false question. Ten total questions, two, all right, two options for each one, ten times, that's two to the tenth power. For the multiple choice questions, one correct answer from a list of five. There are five answers for each multiple choice, a total of two questions, so five chances, uh, five options for the first question, five options for the second question, that's five squared possible answers. Total answer sheets will be 2 to the 10th times 5 squared, and I am absolutely going to pull out a calculator to do that calculation. We get 25,600 possible outcomes just from a 12-question final exam. All right, that's why you study. That's, that's not likely if you're just randomly marking choices. Now, in general, uh, we will have the number of answers for each question to the power of the number of questions. For example, all right, 10 true false, there are two possible outcomes, either true or false. And I have 10 questions with which to answer those, all right, two to the 10th. Same thing here. There are five possible outcomes on my multiple choice, and I have two multiple choice questions, five, squared. Because it's followed by, followed by is a sequence of choices, and that's why I choose to multiply. Now let's look at the next example. A test requires that you answer either part A or part B. Now you're having options, you have alternatives. Part A consists of eight true or false questions, and part B consists of five multiple choice questions with one correct answer in four. How many different completed answer sheets are possible? So let's boil this down. We have the option of part A or part B, so indicates alternatives, I'm gonna add. For part A, we have eight true-false questions. True-false has two possible answers. I need to answer eight of those, so that's two to the eighth power. Part B consists of five multiple choice questions with one correct answer and four. So there are four options for each question, A, B, C, and D, and I'll have five questions, so four to the fifth power. This will give me a total of part A or, so add part B, two to the eighth plus four to the fifth, 1,280 possible answer sheets. So this has 13 questions. This has more questions than our last one, but because we have part A or part B, right, we have fewer options possible. That's it for decision algorithms. Uh, many different ways we can combine these two things together to get the answers we need. Thanks for listening.